my favorite part of this pod is when we do things on our phone. Or yeah, this or the last episode where we took the quiz. <laughs> yes, or when we um, so many inside jokes that we don't even bother to can uh, finish the sentences, but we know what we're talking about, but don't feel they like explaining. Do they? These people have watched every single thing we've made for like six years. Or when we repeat four stories in a row <laughs> and have no recollection of it. It's not just the story repeating. It's telling it like I can't believe I've never told you this. Yeah, like or, or no, you set it up like um. I never told anybody this before. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't ever start like. Hi. Let, let's do it. Okay. Hi. Forty-five minutes. I could do that. I could keep that up for forty-five minutes. I know you could. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to another episode of the podcast called "The Bald and the Beautiful." Bald. Bald as fuck, um, and beautiful on the inside. How have we never done a restock of our faggy bald merch? Faggy bald hat merch. Faggy bald fuck hat merch. Faggy bald fuck. Remember oh, the faggy F-B-F. bald fuck. Hat? Yeah. Flashback Friday. Um, I think because it's uh the, we the language is people. coarse and it's um I like doing limited items merch wise. Right. I really do. I don't think it's a classic. I think it's a it's a sharp percussive uh. note and then it's a uh, uh. what do you got? What's going on here? Uh. Good. PMS. I su- what does it say? I suffer from PMS, putting up with men's shit. <laughs> <laughs> so so he didn't douche. <laughs> Putting up with this shit. I didn't douche. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When's um, the last time you douched? Oh, great question. Um, it was about three, four weeks ago. Yeah. And I douched with water, warm water. And, you know, I didn't want to talk about shit right away because um, we did talk about shit last episode mm. at length. Well. At, at length. But, um, you know, I, I just, I'm not that type of person that needs to do anal. But I did stick a thing up my butt from Lilo, one of our sponsored uh, dildos. And I have to tell you, and you probably know, it was very pleasurable. Yeah. 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 Right time, right place, right energy, right speed. There's mm. a lot of variables that can make it not good. There's a lot of variables that could make it not good mm-hmm. at the grocery store. Um, oh. Astroglide tweeted something about putting things up your ass. Astroglide. Is that a water based lubricant? Who would play her? <laughs> Who would play Astroglide as a company? <laughs> okay, this per- Astroglide tweeted mm. Did it hurt? When he tried to sneak in the back door, acting like he somehow got lost in a mysterious labyrinth. Oh, wow. Well, when he, I mean, he put his foot through the doggy door. Because that door is right next. I mean, it's right there. People need to realize that when you're eating pussy, you're eating ass. Well, I think this was a mistake on their part. Because I saw in the comments, people weren't very happy with the verbiage sneak in. Because it makes it seem not consensual. Oh, as if it's sexual assault, which it is. Lube companies tweeting about sexual assault. That's brave. It's and brazen. controversial. It's brazen. It's, yeah, it's brazen. Um, I, on the other hand, yesterday tweeted, uh, Billie Eilish sent me her record player with a vinyl. A record player? Yeah, a, a Billie Eilish record player. Yes. Are you fucking serious? And I tweeted, congratulations, uh, Billie. Welcome to the Blonde Club. Uh, yeah. Can't wait to watch your show September 3rd. It's December 3rd. And those teenage... Children came after oh, me wow. faster than this, the burn of a thousand suns. I'm surprised they didn't just change the calendar. Or find a, a way to edit other people's tweets. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> they send you your own tweet in ransom note form. Like volumes yes. of it. <laughs> Billy was probably on Twitter going, well, I guess we're moving it to September. <laughs> Because this fag, <laughs> this really influ- <laughs> highly influential fag <laughs> says I have to just do it on ruin September. This for me. Let's talk about it. Talk about what? Violet's show last weekend. Wait, wait, wait. Before we do that, I have to mention something because I'm going to forget it. Okay. It's very pertinent. Uh, Someone was in the studio earlier this morning, um, a musician, a singer, a singer, and he said that some people say he looks like Trixie Mattel. And he had recently got this hairline procedure done, a tattoo of a shaved head. Have you ever heard of this? Oh, the head head tattooing? Yeah. And I was skeptical. It looks great on some people. Yes. It looked Fabulous on him. Yeah. And I immediately thought, hmm. Should we do that? Who would play her? And oh. I thought, you would. Who is it? It's a man who looks like you. Really? Yeah. I'll show you. Okay. I'll show well, you. Well, I just fear that for, let's say, really fair skinned people. He was that. Okay. I would say that it would be a, a really slippery slope with too dark of ink, too much. No, you go, you go in gradations. 
It's yeah, a process. Because you, you don't do you, Francois Sagat right no, off the bat. No, you do Francois Sagat. Mm-mm. You do like, it's like a, you know. It's subtle. Subtle. Wow. Yeah. It was fierce. It was fierce. And but I saw I mean, it right close up. I said, come into this light. Now come into this light. Yeah. And they said, wow. take your top off. That's fierce. Yeah, it Would was you ever really get cool. it? Uh, no, personally, no, it wouldn't work for me. Because blonde. And your hair's only gray. Turn, like my hair's gray, is and it it's gray. It's all gray. Are you serious? Bone sticking out. Bone <laughs> sticking. Yes, it's all gray. It's all gray. It's gray. And are I your pubes care. gray? N- uh, no, they are black. Black. <laughs> black I glue them on. I glue them on. I glue them on. So, anyways, that I wanted to mention that because bald and beautiful. But okay. I love the head tattoo thing. I, I think just it would, would look be, good on um, you. I would be scared. I think it would look good on me, but I would be oh, scared. Mary, you it would be flawless. Really? Yes, because what I'm seeing right now, Mary, you would look like you had a buzz cut. It would age you uh, back maybe 12, 12, seconds. 12 years. 12 seconds? No, 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 no. You would be, you would walk around like you had a fucking battering ram in your, you know what I mean? You would walk wow. around. Wow. Yeah. Did you know that swimmers shave their heads? Uh, No. One of my friends is a high school swimmer. Um, Don't and- they wear swim caps? Uh, no, it was a bunch of guys, and they all had shaved heads so they can swim faster. But they shave everything. To swim faster. Everything. Interesting. Because those, um, when they wear those shorts, they come, they're like those 2002 coochie cutter um, uh-huh. low rises where you see about a half inch of crack and the whole mon's pubis. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Mon sticking out. Mon sticking out. If I was a swimmer, I don't know if I would win swimming because I would I would I would do looks and the looks would hinder my swimming. Well, you would be so I mean a Von Dutch baseball cap. <laughs> it probably the, uh, <laughs> you know the, all the accessories. Yeah, it would, Adobe the house chunky elf, jewelry. <laughs> Adobe house elf pillow pillow sack, chunky jewelry. Yeah. Um Shakari Wilson nails. Nails. Nails that maybe you claw the water faster. Yes, clawing clawing yeah. the water. And then on the feet the platform Manolos. sneakers would probably, yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. I'd probably draw. Can you, can you swim at all on heels? Can you? Absolutely not. No, no. you can't like flip yourself through the water. You need flippers. You need flippers. Yeah, you need flippers. Plus, they wear bodysuits nowadays. Oh, they're not naked anymore. No. Really? Oh, actually, no. The men's relay, they were very, they were very topless. Because I noticed it would make you swim faster to be naked. Mm-hmm. Smooth skin. Yeah, it makes me watch. You do. I, I think they're so hot. That body shape, they're super tall. They have like, they're just crazy shaped. Yeah. Um. Anyways, I speaking of crazy shaped, Violet. Violet. Um. Well, uh, I guess we can get into it. Let's get into it. So, Violet Chachki. Yeah. Who would play her? Um. <laughs> a young, a young Dita Von Teese. A young Dita Von Teese, Yeah. We got to see a lot more me, which is Violet Violet's solo show, um, at the Bel- Belasco. I don't know where I was. It was at the Belasco. I think that's how you pronounce it. It was a beautiful theater, but that but had been recently turned into a music uh, venue, i.e. no fucking chairs. Well, the floor seating was no chairs. We were lucky enough. Violet, thank you for putting us mm. on a special. <laughs> she put us in a special little VIP where there were chairs. It mm-hmm. was rather private, wristband only. I will say this. I, I called her assistant, Ellie, and then I got on the horn with her, and she said, I was like, listen, I don't want to be that girl to ask for comps, you know, because that's, I don't want to be that girl. I'll pay. She's like, she's like, so you want to see what a real show looks like, honey? (laughs) And she was more than happy to give us both comps and she, four of them. Um, But I was expecting like a, a, uh, uh, the Muppet style, no, the Muppet style, a balcony um, setup. Oh, it's time to put on makeup. Yeah. Like, you know, at the, uh, uh, the finale. when um, Waldorf. Exactly. Or Michelle and Carson in the, in the, yes. that's what I thought. And um, what, uh, what you want happened. All rise for the good lady, Brian McCook. And that, then you would walk yeah, out. Uh, uh, and like Prince Andrew just die. Yeah. But it, it was nothing of the sort. It was fine. It was more private than I thought it would be. It, well, who was it? it was a, um, it was a real. It was a celebrity who's who a little bit. We saw Jeremy Scott. Jeremy Scott. Yeah. I, sh- I am not to be a nerd. He's great. I have been text friends with him for years, uh-huh. and I finally saw him in person. Yeah. And I gave him a big hug, and we chatted, and he yeah. was so nice. And he was talking about some certain stuff he had coming up that I thought was cool, and mm. I just gave him a huge hug, and I said, "I got to tell you, mm. your shows just changed my life. Oh, I just really? love them." What do you say? He said, get the, who are you? (laughs) No, I just was like, your show has made me aware of fashion at all. Mm. I just love you. 
That's really nice of you to say. And I said, I loved your show last year during quarantine when you had the marionettes because it was nice to see my size on the runway. <laughs> hmm. Finally, representation for you. <laughs> hey, who else also, the Price is Right runway, bitch. Dee -dee -dee. Oh, yes, yeah, so good. So, the caftan of the TV dinner? I mean, incredible. Oh, my yeah. God. Camp. There's some wig issues. No one, but no, there were intentional wig issues. Do you, no, 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 no. You don't, there were wigs that were placed intentionally an inch above the natural hairline. You didn't catch that? You didn't catch that? You don't smell that, that, that wig on their head? Maybe I'm not smart enough to pick up on this. No, 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 no. It was clearly intentional. Yeah. Okay. Like bad That's what wigs. I'm going to say next time too, when my wig fully comes off. But your wig never does that. It, actually, not in a long time. Knock no, because you're a professional. And I stopped moving around on stage. <laughs> Stop um, moving around on stage. Yeah. Who else? Um, Kim was there. Kim. Um, Bob. Bob. Can we do an impersonation of Bob watching that show? I never saw her the whole night. Mama. Bob. Was she do? Say, Where she was just, she? She. She. Like this? Who, who would play her? Viola. Viola Davis. Viola Davis. Yeah. Uh, who would play her is Viola Davis in Suicide Squad. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Bob internally <laughs> loved the show, but externally, Bob is. <laughs> Meanwhile. I am grinning ear to ear, standing up. I cried at one point. I cried. Yeah, it was tears really streaming cool. out. Tears streaming out. I was just like, Whoa. she was. Obviously, we knew the drag was gonna be good. We knew the stunts were gonna be good. The microphone no. skills were great. Yeah, that bitch was much funny. better. Somebody yelled, "Violet, I love you!" And Violet goes, "I, I don't, don't know, know you. you." Yeah, it was really great and quick. It was so yeah. funny. The only thing I would say, if we're gonna get a little critical, is that. For me, that the character, the persona of the bitch, if it just stays bitchy and hateful, it, it's almost like there's like um, I don't know, it hits a wall because then there's like no, not a lot of depth to it. Like you know what I mean? I disagree. Okay. I felt like, wow, how fun to how fun that the audience is almost like expecting you to go out there and be like, it's the least you guys could do is be here tonight. I yeah, look yeah, incredible. Yeah. Oh That's yeah, a yeah, 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 yeah. POV. Yeah, totally. And also when when Ellie brought out a red solo cup, and she goes, "I'm in couture, a red solo cup." Yeah. And then they brought out a red solo cup with a rhinestone with straw. With a rhinestone <laughs> straw, it was so cute. And that I, it's it's great because I mean the benefit of wearing outfits like that, you know, even during that whole monologue, I was just so transfixed on the garment. I was like, I want that. I took pictures of every look of oh, the show. Oh, you did. Yeah, zoomed in. What was your favorite? Oh my God! Well, she started out with um, a Jeremy Scott made garment. It was um, the, it was like a, a tuxedo suit that mm -hmm. had oh, tear away. Mama, we have to talk about this mm -hmm. now. As a performer, I oh, the zipper anxiety that I experienced during that show, mm -hmm. the the as a as like as an audience member, but as a performer, I'm like, oh, I see a little struggle there with the zipper because the whole burlesque gig is taking off clothes seamlessly and intentionally. Yeah. And there was a moment where the zipper like um, uh, caught a little bit. I almost had a heart attack. You went. <sighs> I almost had a heart attack. It's like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? There was a really fierce Lilo plug in the middle of the show where Violet got on a giant inflatable pink dong. Mm -hmm. And she's in this like pink, I think it was like latex, mm -hmm. like fetish suit. It was just everything. Yeah. It was so good. And I love that in the beginning of the show, Violet goes, well, I got inspired to do the show because I used to tour with all the drag queens and I hate doing those group <laughs> tours because I hate other drag queens. And I just thought, what if we did this show, but a little more me? <laughs> she was like, I realized my hatred of people led me down one path towards myself. <laughs> totally. <laughs> it was so good. She was so beautiful. She was great. And it was... I mean, it's uh, and the. I mean, we. I feel like we're unfair sometimes in the. Not me in the world because mm -hmm. when you look like Violet, people go. There's drag queens who do kicks and splits, mm -hmm. and they're performers. Mm -hmm. But then if you look good and don't do the splits, you're not a performer. Violet number one can do the splits and did them yep. in the show. Sure, sure. Number two, the commandment on stage. Mm -hmm. You are all going to watch this shit, bitch. Mm -hmm. It was like. The yeah. way she, it's, one person on a stage, most of the show, she just inhabited all of it. Yeah. And I mean, and also it was what was happening after, like uh, behind the scenes that I was like, what is going on back there? It's probably like, uh, do you, you know, know be Violet's Fukushima? dresser? Absolutely not. No, but I don't. I somebody don't. Somebody gets killed every night. Every night, casualties, <laughs> a pile, trail of tears. <laughs> like it is just. Do you want to turn to Violet? The, the zipper just split. No, 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 no. 
No, I don't. Because they need to have a cobbler on retainer. <laughs> they need to have, like, seriously, MacGyver back there. They have um, a cobbler at my show. A cobbler. Peach cobbler. <laughs> <laughs> it's a peach cobbler. <laughs> We're going to take a break. Okay. Hi, it's me, Trix and Mattel. I'm here to speak to you about something that I think is amazing. Green Chef. Green Chef makes it easy to eat the immune-boosting foods you need to stay healthy and fuel a jam-packed end of summer. Green Chef is incredible. It takes care of meal planning, grocery shopping, and even some food prep, giving you more time to tackle the back-to-school season. Eating well is easier than ever with satisfying home-cooked dinners and options that work around your lifestyle, not the other way around. It's so amazing. This gets delivered to your home in a bag that perfectly refrigerates everything inside. Everything is in there. Everything you need. The ingredients are proportioned out ahead of time. Um, The seasoning is in there. And if you're somebody like me, these meals can actually cook for two. So I get my food for today and tomorrow in one little cooking session. I've made at least 15 of these things and I have never spent more than 30 minutes cooking. And every time I can't believe I made it. I recently made a bisque, a soup from scratch, myself. I couldn't believe I made it. It was so good. Most of these recipes, um, you can keep the card and then it has the recipe listed. So next time you want to make that, you've already made it and now you can shop for the real ingredients. It's really fabulous. And as a vegetarian, I find it hard to find meals to make at home that are actually like fulfilling and exciting and don't feel like a normal meal missing vegetarian, like, you know, the option. It's so good. I couldn't recommend it more. It made me a very confident cook at 31 years old, and I can't believe I like cooking now. Go to greenchef.com slash bald100 and use code bald100 to get $100 off, including free shipping. Go to greenchef.com slash bald100 and use code bald100 to get $100 off, including free shipping. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. What interferes with your happiness? Is there something preventing you from achieving your goals? For anything you might be experiencing, BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in just under 48 hours. You can send a message to your counselor anytime and enjoy timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions, all without ever having to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if you need. Licensed professional counselors who are specialized in depression, anger, stress, family conflicts, LGBT matters, anxiety, relationships, sleeping, trauma, grief, self-esteem, and more. Everything you share is confidential, it's convenient, professional, and affordable, and you can check out the testimonials posted daily on their site. I love this because personally I've had so many logistical barriers between getting from me and my therapist. Um, Long drives, expensive Uber rides, weird waiting rooms, so this is a perfect thing that I love. I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash bald. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash bald. And we're back. And we're back. So I have to tell you about the moment I cried at the theater. Okay. It was at Violet's show. Uh Uh-huh. So she does... um, uh, By the way, go... Oh, no, it's done. You can't go see it anymore. It's permanently done? No, I... Oh, she's doing Canada. Oh, go see. I mean, go see. It. So if it you're in Canada, just... go ahead and go see it because the tickets were reasonable. Very reasonable. Very reasonable. Especially for us since they were free. Yes. Um. Uh, but for the for the, you know, I don't love standing up. I won't stand up for anybody, not even gay rights or the national anthem. Um. But I actually did. It was a standing room. And I had to stand up because someone stood right in front of me. Why are we? We were in the VIP with all seats. Why are people standing? We were not. Mary, that was not a VIP. That was a very immense population. That's what the VIP stood for. Well, Very me, immense gr- population. Girl. girl Voluminous, girl. intense ah. people. <laughs> That's what it stood for. I, you know what? I'm not going to say it. Don't <laughs> don't say it. Is it I'm going to say it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, is that meme? The is challenge like, with the VIP sometimes is, is those people are in fact not VIP. In no. fact, it ends up being people who desperately wish they were VIP, which yeah. is worse. Regular, regular P. So then it's like... <laughs> We're so thankful Violet gave us this little square of bread to stand here and watch the show. Yeah. And then it's 47,000 people that you don't know. Yeah. Wait, what? Like, it, there's that wasn't actually room to see the show or breathe, but it, yeah. it was it was worth standing for, for sure. Yeah, I had to stand up, and I'm, I'm surprised that I wanted to because, I mean, I don't stand up. I love to sit. I, I was expecting a theatrical performance where I was sitting down and I wanted her to be wheeled out Hannibal Lecter style, just outfit, each outfit, you know, to the left, to the right, to the center and back. But um, 
I, you know, I at one point I realized there was just a fan standing right next to me. Oh yeah, no wrist, no wristband. Oh yeah, just a fan vibing. Oh yeah, wandered uh, I, into the VIP section. I, I DJed at Summer Tramp on Sunday, and there was a little twink behind us. It was like me, Mario Diaz, Andres Regal, all In these the like DJ all these like LA nightlife people, right? In the DJ and I'm sweating booth. bullets because I have I'm, I'm I'm doing this, and it's Andres and and you know like real people next to me. Yeah. And then all day we're like, oh, that guy must be with someone. At the end of the day, Mateo goes, do you know what I found out? That little twink who was standing on stage the whole night, we all just, he was so confident. We all assumed he was with someone. He wasn't. The con. Yeah. It's the con. It's the unmitigated gall. Yeah. He looked, I'm going to my he, own show being like, is it okay if I come in? Mary, that was me um, trying to get into the to Belasco. I was like, I have VIP tickets at the Will Call. And I'm like... Uh, I don't want to exactly. cut the line. I don't want to cut the line. I Gigi. Yeah. I followed, I saw That's Gigi. That's a great technique. Gigi yeah. walked by and I was like, wherever yeah. she goes, they're going to believe that she's VIP. Yeah. So I have to, yes, smash yeah. her. Like, I don't uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hobble behind her. Yeah, I um, Igor'd myself back in uh, Got Mick. So that worked for me. So yeah. that works as well. Mm-hmm. I thought that person was going to fall off the balcony. What? Uh, during the intermission of the show, I believe, Got Mick got on top of the, you know the balcony is a ledge. Uh-huh. She got on the ledge on both knees no. and stood up and was like, "Woo!" And the audience was wooing her. And I was like, "We're about to watch that ninety-pound man dressed as a ninety-pound woman fall to her death." Oh, they would have caught her and just like sprung right back up, just like cheerleading. <laughs> she would have floated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the show was just the uh, show was great. And um, there was one moment where, um, so she does a uh, it's the chair dance. So she does an aerial chair act and. Um, you know, she's up there very high on stage, um, unsupported. There's no there's no net. There's no wire. And she's up there. And if she fell, she would break her neck. And, die. Yeah, she could die. Absolutely. She could die if she fell. Um, gravely injured, at least. And I'm like, fucking hell. Like, just on um, squeezing her calves and um, quads. And then when she goes back up and does the, um, the split on the chair. And I was like, I started crying because I was like, good. I was like. You go, girl. <laughs> like I was felt like like a like a princess was living her fairy tale. Yes, Not, that sounds. No, I don't know. I, mean, I felt the, it. Do you know what I mean? Like I it felt was, it, and it was the you fantasy. Know it, you know what it was? It was somebody doing what they love better than anyone. Yeah, in in oh, in real time. We were so like so beautiful. And you know, you were thinking. I kept thinking like she's gonna go home tonight, and she's gonna get in bed and go. I fucking let those whores have it, yeah. and she did. Yeah, it was cool. and also not to be morbid. But isn't that the point of aerials is it does cross my mind. We could watch Violet die tonight. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what half of the crowd was showing up to see. <laughs> Can I have a comp in case and you fall to your death? 50% of those people left home, you know, they went back home disappointed. But, yeah. <laughs> Me and Gigi Gorgeous like this. Yeah. Like, fall, bitch, fall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, once she goes up there, I keep, and then I have to catch myself and go like, oh, the, uh, this isn't like the Spice Girls at the Olympics where they're belted into something. Yeah, no. She could just fall to her death in a wig and die. Yeah. This ain't Cirque du Soleil, bitch. I mean, the VIP didn't even have security. You think she's got a wire? I get nervous (laughs) walking in heels backstage because of everything. I turned to the person who I didn't know who had no wristband. uh, Kimchi. Yeah. And I was like, Hmm. I couldn't even walk across the stage in those heels that she's wearing. No. Those, um, those, uh, those arched her foot is past vertical it's this her arch is past a vertical i was like and she's not only she's doing all this stuff i mean it was just crazy you oh, know what's great about it too beautiful. is um bob and i were watching going how does this person have the same job title as us like right but the great thing is we were on the same i don't season. aspire to do what she does hell fucking so no bitch so like i never watch violet and go like Oh, I'm always oh like, never no 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 that's why I was able to Jupiter. like yeah that's why I would I never for once like compared I was like I was like oh wow I could hang upside down out of drag four feet off the ground you know what I mean like from in my noose. home yeah like in my <laughs> from my pull up bar with a, I, a I don't sex swing ever, <laughs> yeah the one time I tried to use a sex swing a beam came down and I was responsible <laughs> for a condo building collapsing <laughs> I couldn't even get my wig glued on <laughs> like that you know what I mean it's like start to I, I might I, not show yeah no it's just none of that could happen for me not one thing and I was like it's so nice to see somebody actually go and do it yeah she but I wanted to talk to you about this though because I was recently in drag last night for a photo shoot very simple but I was in full drag and I was miserable mm-hmm. and I was in pain and I snatched my way so fiercely to a rivetingly uncom- unbelievably svelte 
31 inches. <laughs> I felt like Violet. I felt, and I'm talking, this is a bone cincher, custom made, and bone I'm Bone sticking out. Bone sticking out. Bone, bone sticking out. No, bones not sticking out. Like, <laughs> bones staying put. And I am, I can't breathe. I'm very uncomfortable. I can't bend over. Can I touch your body? I do the, yeah. I, I do see the how fat you've gotten. Bone sticking out. So, yeah. It's not bad, but it just can't. I mean, girl, what's your waist? I'm bigger than you, but yours is firm. But like, it's but this is it. I, but also, you have a lot of muscle there. Muscle doesn't squish like other things. Um, the the well, there's your training core strength involved. Is amazing. There's training involved. However, I, what I'm trying to say is my waist. This is there's blubber here. Yeah. I don't have a lot of oh, blubber, but <laughs> that's you. This is where most of it's located. Anyways, the point I'm trying to make is. It is um, so uncomfortable to look even halfway good a lot of the time. Oh, yeah. And I think that obviously the cliche pain is beauty is, you know, it's a cliche. But I when I see Violet and when I I, I just want to be the, the the homely, funny girl, not even funny, maybe just the homely girl who wanders in and is looking you, for a hot dog. You were. Yeah. <laughs> the homely girl who wants to write a check for a hot dog. You, it That's was, what I want to be. It was um, good that you had the wherewithal to leave before the end. I had to. Because oh, it, getting what out happened? of there was... Oh, no. Yeah. It, it was tough. I felt bad <sighs> because Amy came up and gave me a hug mm -hmm. from Sugar Pill, and yeah. I had to go, I have to leave. Yeah, because you're in a hostage and situation. Had to, run, had to run out of the yeah. lobby. Had well, to run out of the lobby, and I grabbed Gigi Gorge and said, are you getting in a car? I'll go wherever you're going. Yeah. Because and I just thumbed a ride with Gigi to her home. You just dive through the Bentley. To her house. Yeah. Oh, good. Because she goes, I have, she goes, we're going to, she goes, we're going to go to um, the chapel, but I have to go home because I have to get new shoes. And I was like, what happened? She's like, I broke them. <laughs> and I, she broke both her heels. And I was like, you How? fat cunt. God, she's gained what? 50, 60 it's, pounds. <laughs> yeah. She looks always flawless. I mean, uh, it's just on Another thing, believable. her name is Gigi Gorgeous, and you're like, you know, one day she's gonna drop the ball. I haven't seen it yet. You know, what would you, who would play her as far as like, if she's Gigi Gorgeous, what are you, Goo Goo Magoo? I am literally, um, uh, uh, uh I'm Goopy McDonald. My, uh, yeah, like, um, uh, my like a, a fungi, some kind of fungi, <laughs> protozoa, like uh, of. Uh, I'm Beavis Meisler Water. <laughs> uh, it's horrible. Yeah. It, yeah, I'm the shit. I'm the dead rat that the um, the fungi pokes through in order to decompose that thing and put it back in the earth. That's me. <laughs> well, we we sent Violet some pre-show gift, which was nice. Yeah, your suggestion, which I immediately shot down, I said yeah. no. I said, why don't we send her? She gave us comps, and I'm like, why don't we send her flowers? And you go, you said no exclamation point because I would I, I was just I've been going through some personal things about flowers. I hate them. I hate them so, so you decide much. Everyone hates them. Of course, that's when I came to my senses and realized that not everybody thinks like me, right? That's a part of being being, being well, a person. So we send Violet an item, then she has to take it home with her. Sending her flowers that she feels like I can throw it away. Great. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. You are right in this in this regard. Plus, you appreciate flowers. That's great. Most people do. It's a wonderful gesture that's not often looked at with contempt or disgust. No. Like, or like me or Madonna. And Violet in full drag, getting what? How many roses do we send her? I'm uh, just like 1500. Yeah, and it half pink, half red, I think. <laughs> yeah, half pink, half red. I bet I bet they were delivered and Violet was getting a drag and said, "Who are they from?" And they said Tracy and Koch, and she's probably like, "Hmm." So I feel I was so happy that you did that because yeah. I think it was a really nice gesture and I'm she sure she felt it. great but she, she felt great. It. I was what happens to me when I see flowers anywhere. In the dressing room, that's fine, it's not my property. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. live there. I find them in front of my door. I say, "What the fuck is going?" I feel like it's a trap or I feel like it's a prank. <laughs> and then once I realize it's neither of those things, I just realize it's a huge pain in the ass. You just bought me a trip to the dumpster. I'll tell you this. When it was my birthday, what, a week ago, I got flowers from PG. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. I got flowers. A hundred roses from Netflix. A hundred. Wow. A hundred. I got, my assistant got me roses mm -hmm. and I texted it. Who did I text? Margot Robbie. No, 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 no. I text oh. Pete from World of Wonder uh. and said, you know, my birthday ends in seven hours. <laughs> Netflix already delivered. Yeah. So you think, I don't know what you guys are yeah, doing. I don't know. Pete's probably doing one of the 400 jobs <laughs> he's tasked with. <laughs> you know what I mean? But see, for me, flower. I've, I don't know if I've said it before. I hate flowers. Uh, I love fake flowers. 
But to me, flowers are a, a, such a, a frivolous inconvenience. You look at the fucking shithole I live in. You think we're operating on the level of flowers? It's like, no. Get me a sponge. Can I get some Dawn soap? Get me some dish soap. Give me some cash. Can I, can I get a tushy? Yeah, maybe some goo gone for that shit that's on the wall. Maybe a <laughs> pillowcase. How about a new, you know, a, a new a welcome lock? mat? Yeah, anything. Literally $3 in a card. Can I get a shoehorn? Yeah, anything. Literally anything. Any kind of useful tool or, or, or gesture. Or simply like a singing telegram. Yeah. I love my birthday gift, by the way. Oh, I'm you. glad you like Yeah, I'm glad you like Stunning. it. Stunning. I want to get a similar one because I need a... Um, I need a fanny pack. It's not beautiful to be a balding person and then have a backpack. I feel like a That's fucking- That's the problem. I was just telling somebody about this. I was like, I'm at the point where uh, too many things fit in my pocket, too many things for my pockets. Way too many. But a backpack- I'm not, not going to school. I look I look like Robin Williams in that movie Jack, you where look he's like, aging super yeah. fast. Where you look like, I look like Steve Buscemi going back to high school. Hello, fellow kids. Exactly. It's yeah. not cute. Pedo vibes. <laughs> <laughs> it is not pedo get in. I know. Yeah, but I got a lot of shit in there. The show was good though. The show was good. I had um, to run out of there. I I ran out because I had so they had a sm listen. They had the Shangri La. I've never seen anything like it. A smoking area outside, sparsely populated. I walked into there. Only three people in there. Full bar. Not that I care, but Joe Camel. Was, uh, Joe, Joe Camel, the Marlboro Man, and then Misty um, Ultralight 1000 was there. It was, I was like, really? And so, but at intermission, I had some very unfortunate series of fan interactions that just compiled and I just booked it. I yeah. just booked it, Mary. Yeah. You know what I did forget about? There were Julie Roberts there. I forgot that we were going to, we're not famous, but I no. forgot that we were going to an event where we actually probably were Every, so yeah i forget that i forget it too because normal day to day whatever who cares who cares but at those events every single person, person. knows who we are uh -huh. almost ev almost a hundred percent of the crowd after you left um during intermission i think i stood up to go talk to Gigi, and so people on the floor saw me yeah so then people were teaming up down there in groups and going one two three and yelling brian Furcus. oh oh so yeah don't uh, yeah they uh somebody during violet's show wait during yeah. the show no during intermission oh, okay, they were okay. yelling my name in groups at once to get me to respond what was like, they're gonna show him your tits Violet's like it's literally New Orleans? about to go on stage yeah what if you just focus on her for five seconds yeah i don't it was yeah. crazy i don't i really don't like being the center of it i like i should have brought a disguise you know we should have done the rupaul mask mask um and with, wheelchair with like, did you have a hat, a hat or something yeah RuPaul she like showed a, up to peach's show incognito our show our show, yes, our show, undercover, literally, um, girl, CSI wishes. Yeah. Miami Vice could never. Well, I remember Peaches was like, word on the street is RuPaul's coming to your show. And I was like, yeah. I don't even think Katya's coming to this show. <laughs> this is in. And then RuPaul, and then Katya, and then Peaches goes, you know, Peaches is famous for keeping everything under wraps and never gossiping or anything. And Peaches Christ goes, RuPaul is here, but don't tell the cast because they don't want to go nervous. I walk out into the dressing room two seconds later and people are like, RuPaul's <laughs> everyone knew yeah. and RuPaul came in I loved it I think though. like a cabana hat um, a, mask. a mask at the time yep. he just called it a SARS mask which I don't think is Be it was pre-COVID no 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 yeah it was a SARS no it was like an airport mask around you know SARS or bird flu yes. yeah 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 and then she in a wheelchair RuPaul's in a in wheelchair. wheelchair it was brilliant it's brilliant and because she's so tall you have to remember she has to be so t she's uh, immediately if you don't recognize her you're like who is that and then you recognize her. Yeah. So the wheelchair is a brilliant touch. And she was, I think, wheeled by her. Um, uh, George, who was dressed husband. as a nurse. Yeah. <laughs> a slutty nurse. He was dressed as <laughs> the nurse, like at the end of a promising young woman with a car yes. wig yes, and a, a bunch of G and a bottle oh. of vodka. Yes. I loved that movie. It was fierce. It got me together. It was fierce. Promise. Did you like, how did you feel about the ending? Loved it. You did, yeah. Loved it. Do you didn't think it was too whimsical? That she died? Um, no. Okay. Sorry, spoiler alert. Oh. Sorry, she lives forever. She dies in her bed surrounded by chubby grandchildren. <laughs> Huge. Chubby. Grand Huge children. chubby grandchildren. <laughs> I loved it because do we th they really think that a tiny little woman would escape a, a situation like that? Yeah. Realistically, no. Yeah. She's also standing over him with a knife. Yeah. I mean. Knife sticking out. Knife, knife sticking yeah. out. Yeah. I loved it. She got me together. Yeah. She got me together. That posthumous, like, gotcha 
thing was pretty good. Oh, so that's the ultimate. Yeah. That's the ultimate. Got gotcha. Yeah. I have an envelope prepared in case of uh, my sudden demise. First thing I do every day is mm -hmm. I schedule a text in case I die tomorrow. Oh, I have several envelopes already stamped. Do you really? <laughs> oh yes. Where the bodies are buried. Um, Latitude let's and longitude. Let's just say lots of different. There's about there's two dozen envelopes. When you die, mm -hmm. can I have some money? I, oh yeah, absolutely. Work. <laughs> Work. I'm gonna. I would. Yeah. I was trying to. I was figuring that out the other day. I was like, you know, if I say I get in a car accident or something, um, I have a, a, enough money to give away for people to be mad at. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't have a lot of money, but like, I have enough money for a people few to fight people. Over. Yes, exactly. Yes. Because you you got that in my head with the Rico Kasich and uh, Paulina Porskova thing, and um, she uh, so she was distraught that. She, Do you see yourself as a Rick? Or a Paulina. I see myself as the cat. I think there was a cat um, <laughs> somewhere. But um, but you know, like children's, uh, you know, children fighting over estates or whatever. Um, I was like, ooh, what a wonderfully morbid activity to figure out who gets what in the unlikely. Isn't that horrible? In the very likely event of my death. Uh, do you want to talk about this? Because we could take a break and talk about it. Let's take a break and talk about okay, it. Okay, we're taking a break. Hi, it's Trixie, and Keeps offers a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair. Convenient virtual doctor consultations and medications delivered straight to your door every three months. You don't have to leave your home. I personally love my head and showing my scalp. But Keeps is great for people because you now have options. Your hair isn't vanishing before your eyes. You have science-tested options. Discreet packaging and proven results. Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors. Prevention is key with hair loss, you guys. This is anything. It's easier to keep the hair than to try to recover the hair. Treatments can take four to six months to see results, so act fast. We have a friend who has hair loss, as 65% of men over 35 do, and he finds this system extremely effective. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash bald to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash bald to get your first month free. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash bald. Guys, for the better part of our lives, our better halves <laughs> have been fantasizing about a perfect wedding ring, cut, clarity, camera, color, you name it. For us guys, not so much. And jewelry stores clearly think the same thing. I have previous experiences trying to buy a band at a jewelry store and I feel uncomfortable. Manly Bands is here to rescue you from an otherwise hellish band buying experience. Manly Bands offers your hand the freedom to look how you want in just about every type of earthly material imaginable. And I would know, I'm Tony Soprano. I like my band. One of my bands is a little rubber band. You can get a band that's like natural, like the wood. Something makes a table. You can get gold, silver, platinum, whatever kind of band you want that fits your hand, your finger. To get started, order the Manly Ring Sizer from Manly Bands to ensure that your ring will fit perfectly during work and play. Once you know your size, it's time for the fun part. Manly Bands has an insane selection of materials to choose from. Gold, wood, antler, steel, dinosaur bone, and even meteorites that killed them. <laughs> You could also choose from one of the Manly Band's curated collections, like the Jack Daniels Whiskey Barrel Collection. I love whiskey because I'm a man. The band I got is a perfect, clean, tiny, simple little silver band. Nothing too flashy, nothing too little, like, look at me. But I was reading a men's magazine, and they said that in 2021, men should wear one simple piece of jewelry. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Once you've selected your band, Manly Bands offers free shipping worldwide, a 30-day exchange policy, and a free warranty. While there might be a 50% chance of your marriage working out, <laughs> there's a 100% chance you're going to love your band. To order your Manly Band to get 21% off plus a free silicone ring, go to manlybands.com slash bald. That's manlybands.com slash bald for 21% off Manly Bands. The best damn rings, period. Let's take another break. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I have thought about it too. Yeah. Well, you have, you're, you're well, I'm not going to. I'm not rich, but I've thought, well, that sounds horrible. No, 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 no. It's Let's all relative. Let's just say this. In my hometown in Wasaki, Wisconsin, I'm filthy rich. Filthy rich, yeah. In Hollywood, Los Angeles, yeah. I am the caddy Quite at a pavo. golf. I'm the caddy at a golf, uh, what do you call it? A golf. Pavo. pavo. Was it a golf green, a golf place? Golf caddy. Golf cart? A, 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 a caddy at a golfing green, a golfing golf course. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, um, I've yeah. thought about like, well, 
who in my life do I love but has enough money of their own where they would get nothing versus like people in my life who are close to me who like some money if I died would change the course of their life. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Like, so I would go, I go loans. Who's got debt in the family, immediate family, any debt? Bam. That's right. the first thing. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, my, you know, my brother is an yeah. attorney. He's totally self-sufficient. Yeah, I'm like, him. God, I would probably give more money to my younger siblings. One being like a new mom. Yes. And the other one, you know, like, and I'm like, I could give a bunch of money to my mom, but I don't realistically see my mom living another at least five years. So like, what is that money doing? You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I would, guess. And then I was like, what well, would I give any, what would happen to my drag? Have you thought about that? What would I want to happen to all this drag? Drag? My dresses and shit. Oh, I sell all mine all the time. I stopped selling. You did? Because you're archiving now. No, I'm not archiving. I just don't want anybody to have anything anymore. Hmm. Interesting. Well, once I started working with Amy Sarazan, who does all oh, my costumes, legend, everything is so way. impeccable that I'm like, and it's not corseted, so I'm like, I could fit that in 10 years. Oh, you know? yeah. Because so I don't want to get rid custom, of it. That's, you know what? That's true. Yeah. I, the stuff custom. I make, I'm just like, oh, I've had enough. I want to get rid of it. To see, we we feel differently about this because mm. I think some of your outfits you made are the best things you have. I and love, like, yeah. You I shouldn't them. get rid of them, but I can make them again better. I guess. You That's know what I mean? True. Like I, the, some of those cr weird cracky shoes, I won't ever get rid of those. They're like, um, they're like little objet d'art. You know what I mean? They're like little sculptures. What happens? I love those mules from Tour that are bejazzled. Me too. Oh. I know they're just so wild. But they're so, and also uh, that takes a lot. Of, like I can finished, you make me some? I, no. I mean, no, because I don't love anybody enough to do that. Isn't that funny? I don't love anybody enough other than myself to make those shoes. I would, well, you know, I'd have to, oh, if I killed your sister, I'd make you a couple of those shoes. So I gotta wait till something horrible happens. I'd have to do a lot, I mean, big time, murder atonement, murder. So the, so the judge is like, you either have to do 60 years to life or you have to make shoes. Yeah, we're like, um, we're prepared to offer you three life sentences or um, six Tory Burch be uh, bedazzled um, mules. <laughs> Made from broken jewelry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All Swarovski. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, um, I've thought about this because of death. Cause you know, I think about death all the time. I do too. What happens to drag queens drag when they die? Uh, Normal people. Do other drag queens come and like take pieces of it? Yeah. So... Uh, well, she didn't die, but she left under the cover of night, so she might as well have. Um, the, the drag queen whose, whose apartment I inherited, uh -huh. Vulture's mama. Vulture's. Did you ever know what happened to her? Oh, yeah, she's she's alive and well in New York City. Yeah. But she left the drag and was like, let people have it, whatever. She was like, listen, you can have the apartment, but I gotta leave tonight. And so it was a lot of cleanup. So the first thing that happened was all the queens came and we uh, vultured. Found a hundred dollars in change on the floor. That gets, gives you an idea of the kind of hoarding going on. This is the fridge that got taped shut. Yeah, yeah. The do not open. The don't, don't open, open that. that. <laughs> oh my god, we remembered a story, <laughs> and we remembered that we already told it. Yes, and yes. Oh! <laughs> through through a callback that we got. Yeah. Also, forty five episodes. Great in. segue. Did you see Candyman? No, did you? I did. Did you live? I lived. And I, so I, I watched it. I was, I was, I mean, I was riveted, unsettled. And then I read the most incredible review by this, um, uh, this writer on Vulture who, mama, this woman, this incredible writer, she took that hook off a of Candyman's uh, hand and slashed that movie until it was just, bleep. she didn't like it. No, she said it was a, and I quote, a soulless, um, Derice, uh, um, derivative piece of garbage. One of the it's the worst movie to come out so far this year. Did she you feel said, that way? It, but so a, well, a lot of the angle was that it was for white folks because it was di oh a didactic soulless um, reinvention. What does didactic mean? I mean it's like too teachy preachy. Like we're teaching you stuff right now. Oh. Like like characters in conversation would be like. Yeah, so gentrification, like they would casually mention how gentrification works in like among black folks who know what that, you know what I mean? Right. So it was very much for a white audience, it felt like, which being a white member of the audience during the time, I was like gagged and I was like, <gasps> and then I like read that and I was like, oh shit. I'm problematic because I'm a I flop. liked it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I thought it was like crazy. I mean, it was, it was very entertaining and crazy and cool, but yeah, there was some, you know, I always wonder like um, people like the gentleman who plays Pinhead or like mm -hmm. when they probably accidentally find some of these iconic horror roles. 
it must be mind blowing for them decades later to be like, how did some job I took once? Tony Todd, yeah, the can- the guy who plays Candyman. How did it turn into like? what defines me i mean in a good way and they never know actors never know if something's going to take off they never know do you do a pilot everybody from game of thrones they had no idea they thought we were were doing some fantasy pilot Eh, that's not going to get picked up 10 years later most popular television show of all time you know you're Arya stark for life for life for life yeah but anyways the but it was um it was interesting like the the it was it gave you the good slash and gore stuff it was a lot of body horror like much more than the original wow and i love the original but get this there were young children in the theater like eight six five four years old and i realized i was like we're like what the what what, what's going on there and then i realized i was 10 when i saw the original that's 10 years old i'm gonna say something that you're afraid to say fuck them kids (laughs) No, I'm just I was just surprised. I don't think it's like I don't think it's like, you know, if it if it gives them nightmares for a week, fuck them kids. But yeah. also I so deeply don't believe in like a censorship at all that I'm like it's a it's a stabby stabby movie. It's not I mean, kids, do you do you feel seriously disturbed because you saw Candyman at 10? Maybe you're not a good a good example. I mean, I would never ever say it in the mirror. I would never. Even to this day? Oh, absolutely not. Not even as a joke. I. <laughs> I do would it. no. Do I, it. I, I. I would not. I would never. But imagine the viewership if you got stabbed and gutted right now. I know, and it was cool in the in the movie. You couldn't see it. It was like he was kind of invisible. Only you could only see him through the mirror. So it were cool effects. Wow. And some bitch got slashed throat open right at the beginning. Wow. Right at the beginning. And it was tied into the art world, so it was kind of a Velvet Buzzsaw, like, killer art. Did you see Velvet Buzzsaw? No, but isn't the original Candyman, there's, like, a lot of... That's in New Orleans, right? The original one? No, it's Chicago. It takes place in Chicago. Um, it's all around Cabrini Green, the um, the housing projects, the low-income area of the city. And there's, like, the original is Virginia Madsen is a white um, uh, grad student who's doing research. And she gets, like, hooked into this story. I gotta rewatch it. That movie it's, scared the shit out of me as a kid. It, well, it's incredible. Because two things, the Philip Glass score, and then get this, she never screams. She gets hypnotized by him. She it's like almost screams. romantic, right? It is. And she actually got hypnotized on set during those scenes. Like, you know, you know, he's in the parking garage during the day. He's like, Helen. It's like seductive. Yeah. It's fucking creepy, though. Would you fuck Candyman? Absolutely. I he think could, I he would, He could take too. that uh, hook and go right Right in my the, little garage. <laughs> Yeah. Right in that parking garage. Yeah. <laughs> Hook sticking out. Hook sticking out. <laughs> <laughs> well. You better say it, say it, say it, say it, say I'm it. I'm going to see it. it. <laughs> no, watch it. I'm sorry to, yeah. Um, you I'm, didn't ruin it. I'm going to see it. I don't no, care. It's, you'll, you'll enjoy it. It's it's a good horror movie for sure. You know, I'm a great horror movie audience. Even when something's horrible, I'm like, I loved it. So yeah. like, I'm I'm yeah. the ultimate. I, it is really well paced. It's never boring. Um, some of the acting is kind of, uh, and, and weirdly, the 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 main character who's this like so, I mean, the guy's so fucking hot. It's kind of flat and wooden in it. It's strange, not very char- charismatic, but um, it's a good horror movie. I'm gonna watch it. Yeah, hook sticking out. Hook hook sticking out. Well, that's the pod. That's it. Anything you want to plug? <laughs> I want to plug those tattoos on your head. <laughs> I want to plug. I, wanna, I, I had never you. been interested in hair plugs, you. but mm. I would be interested in that. I'm going to show you and you're going to gag. Trust and believe. I like being bald. Me too. So like, this that will would look be great. like you have a fresh um, a buzz cut. I'm going to do a, a crowd a crowd fund. It would go look fund me. so good on you. I'm telling you. Okay. You'll gag. I'm going to show will you Will you right go now. with me hold my hand? Uh, yeah. I'll hold your foot. Work. I'll tie your foot to your hand. This You've is never what, had a tattoo. I get though. the tattooed head. I cut off the hand and get a hook. <laughs> I look like I look like Francois Sagad going to a Halloween party and everyone is living. Frangie man. Frangie <laughs> man. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs>